Welcome to First Wednesday, everybody. Can we welcome everyone watching online and the Hernando Correctional Facility as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. We haven't met yet. My name is Kyle. I'm honored to be one of your pastors here at the chapel. And what you've walked into tonight is just a, a beautiful expression. Uh, throughout the weekend, we never try to limit what the Holy Spirit desires to do, but we also know that he operates decently and in order. Can I get a good, oh yeah, right there. But First Wednesday is an opportunity for us just to extend that order a little bit, to stretch our, our capacity and express ourselves to the Lord. Because how many know you didn't rush from work just to have some little patty cake praise? All right, y'all quiet. I'm going to go talk to this side over here. You Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. You, you didn't holler at all three of your kids and shoved Chipotle down everybody's throat just to come in here and play church. But we came in here tonight to have an experience with the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen and amen. Uh, we're in a very special season here at the chapel. This happens on a, a yearly basis. It's, it's cyclical. But we also believe that God does very, something very special because we take time to ask him to reach into the deepest places of our lives through connect groups. Come on, somebody. How many are you excited? You're back with your connect group. Yep. In community. Uh, Care Night has launched where we're watching God help us find freedom in some key areas of our lives. Amen. Amen. So there's transition that's happening. Somebody say transition. Yeah, you are being called and moved from where you used to be to where God has called and created you to go next. And I'm going to try to not to preach too soon, but I feel a shout in my spirit tonight because there is something on the inside of us that hollers, we will not stay the same. Now I'm just looking for four people and I'll make five that just came in here tonight and said, I will not stay the same. Joshua chapter 1 gives us a depiction of what this looks like because there was a transition that was about to take place for the nation of Israel. God had installed a leader named Moses that had led his people out of captivity in Egypt towards a land that he had promised Moses' ancestors, starting with Abraham to Isaac to Jacob and all throughout the 12 tribes. God had made a promise and he was going to keep his word. However, there was a transition that took place and this is where we will pick up our reading tonight. The Bible says this, Joshua 1 verse 2, Moses, my servant is dead. This is God speaking. Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all the people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses, I hear you, Holy Spirit, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. In other words, you about to have earth thing. Come on. Nobody, somebody shout nobody. nobody. Nobody will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Whew. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Be what? Don't say it with your chest. Be what? And courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to give their ancestors to give them. Tonight, for a few moments, I just want to hop in, into this text because it gives us a depiction of where we are, I believe, uh, as we're navigating through transition, knowing that we have been created for more than we, we have experienced. And it is going to take the power of the Holy Spirit through God's word and worship to get us there. Amen. Uh, you'll notice here, uh, verse 2, God himself speaks. This is important because for decades, Moses has been the vocal leader to the nation of Israel. And God has spoken to him directly of what to communicate to his people. 
This shows you the level of esteem that God has for the relationship he shares with Moses. That he, scripture says this in the book of Exodus, uh, uh, around chapter 33, that Moses and God shared the kind of relationship where he spoke to Moses face to face as one would speak with a friend. However, now Moses has died and God is the one that comes and gives the obituary, which lets us know that the esteem that God has for Moses was to make sure that because he has used Moses' voice for decades to communicate his word to the people, it's important to God that Joshua, the new leader, understands that the relationship that he shared with Moses, number one, was valuable. I want to stop right here just for a moment and say this. There's a key principle for us to extract, and that is that everyone needs a godly leader. I thought I'd get a better amen right there because we've tried to lead ourselves in different seasons and we have always wrecked ourselves. But if you check yourself at the door of godly leadership, and this is a great moment for us to lean in and say how blessed we are here at the chapel to have godly leadership, starting with our lead pastor, Pastor Q and Miss Trish. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, one of the things I love about him is that every single day he prays for each one of you. He says, how does he know you? And when you pop up on the GO team and then your name shows up in planning center and you are a part of the GO team roster serving and making a difference every week, he goes through planning center. Those of you on the GO team, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's those requests that sometimes you put red or green, but yellow is mean, come on. Uh, it's, it's those requests that he goes in and he prays for you by name and he prays for your household and, and your children and he asks the Lord to cover you and keep you and speak purpose to your lives. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm, I'm not here at the chapel because this is a cool job, although it is. I'm here at the chapel because God has given me a pastor, my family a pastor and us a pastor that we can look at and say, I'm thankful for godly leadership. Come on. God identifies this same thing in Moses, that now that Moses has passed away, he wants to be certain to Joshua that he understands that I will still be with you. And he reiterates, here we go, he repeats the promise that he made to Joshua's ancestors. In chapter one, verse three, he makes this statement, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Now hear the language of this though. Keep that scripture right there just for a moment. He says, I will give you every place where you set your foot. In other words, you have to take next right steps to possess the promise that I have already guaranteed is yours. Uh, warning, tonight is not a message for comfortable Christians because comfortable Christianity does not accomplish much. As a matter of fact, nothing happens good inside of comfort zones. Everything that God has requires us to put one foot in front of the other and take a next right step. God reestablishes this in the ears of Joshua, not because Joshua has forgotten, but God wants to be clear that the same way I communicated with Moses, I now desire to communicate with you. But Joshua, being a man of action, understands that when God says, wherever your foot goes, I have given it to you. It means, can I say it like I'm back in South St. Pete just for a moment? Baby, we ain't going to be here much longer. Yeah, yeah. And that's encouraging for someone tonight because where you have been has not been a fun place. Where you have been has not been a place that you would ever wish upon your worst enemy. Where you have been has been a place of sadness and a place of grief. It's been a place of discouragement and a place where you have been distraught more than you have celebrated. You have felt destroyed internally. You have felt that every time 
you took three steps forward, something knocked you four steps back. But I believe that Joshua 1.3 is a word that we can plant our two feet in tonight that just simply says that the same thing he promised Moses is what we're about to walk into, but you and I are going to have to cross over. You ought to just push your neighbor next to you, even if you don't know him, just gently nudge him and tell him, tonight we're crossing over. Tonight we're crossing over. T tonight, no, wrong neighbor, Pull, turn around behind you, look at them, tell them that goes for you too. We are crossing over. But then God lets them know that, please understand, the promised land they're going into has been inhabited by a number of enemies. Somebody shout, there are problems. Because every time that God, I feel the Holy Spirit pushing us in here tonight. Uh, every time that there is a promise that God gives, there will always be problems that our adversary gives as well. <laughs> this is why God shows up in Joshua 1 and verse 5, and he gives three straight statements to let Joshua know that he it means business. Joshua 1 verse 5, God himself speaks again and says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The first statement that God makes, he says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. He gives us, here we go, a promise of protection. Now, please understand the promise of protection is not a guarantee that something terrible or negative or adversity is not going to happen to you. That would make us stupid in our belief. Come on, somebody, because Jesus said in this life, you will have trouble but do not be afraid because what i've overcome the world in other words he's repeating the same principle that god says to joshua no one will be able to stand against you isaiah even tells us that no weapon formed against us will prosper now the word prosper means it will not have its expected end in other words it had an assignment but because god is involved in it the planned assignment that the weapon had is going to fail because God has got us protected. Come on, I'm just looking for somebody that you have been through cancer treatments before and you know that he kept you through the process. Come on, I'm looking for somebody that you have been in a mental institution before because you lost your mind. You've been through some stuff that would make everybody on your row blush. But guess what? You are still here today. You are in your right mind. You are breathing because he protected you. When I think about this part of the text, it reminds me of Marvel movies. Come on, y'all know about Marvel movies, right? Come on, stuff like Black Panther. Come on, hello. Uh, the key to a Marvel movie is that it retrained us on what to look for. Because at the end of every Marvel movie, while the credits are still rolling, you ain't going nowhere. Why? Because you know that although that movie has ended, it ain't over. Can I stop here just for a moment and talk to somebody and remind you that while people are running the credits on your story and while people are trying to close the book of where you are and where you've been, God just says, sit right there because it ain't over. He calls himself the author and the finisher, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the first and the last. And so it's not over until God says so. The promise of protection. 
the next thing he gives is a promise of provision. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. Y'all all right tonight? As I was with Moses, I will be with you. What God does is that he reminds Joshua that if I didn't leave Abraham when he had no kids and allowed Abraham to have a son named Isaac, and then I blessed Isaac with children, and Jacob came along, and then Jacob, Abraham went from one, Isaac had two, Jacob had 12. And when God says this to Joshua, he's reminding Joshua, as I've been with your ancestors, I will also be with you as well. I don't know if you read the Bible similar to how I read the Bible, but when I hear the statement, as I was with Moses, I will be with you, it causes me to stop and ask, how were you with Moses? Come on, because I'm not going to take somebody at their word if they haven't had a proven track record of what they're asking me to do. Are you with me? So when we ask the question, how was God with Moses? Here we go. He guided Moses' basket down the flow of the Nile River to get to Pharaoh's daughter. He was with Moses. How was God with Moses? He reestablished purpose in him while Moses hid in the wilderness after killing an Egyptian. He was with Moses. How was God with Moses? He gave Moses the exact words to speak when standing as a stuttering shepherd in Pharaoh's courts. God was with Moses. Moses. How was God with Moses? He opened a dry path down the middle of the Red Sea for Moses to lead over a million Israelites down in the first aquarium to ever show up in history. He was with Moses. How was God with Moses? He wrote out the Ten Commandments for Moses to lead the Israelites well. He was with Moses. How was God with Moses? He spoke with Moses face to face just like a friend, God was with Moses. And what God does here is reminds Joshua that the way, here we go, that I caused water to come out of a rock, the way that I provided manna and quail in the middle of a desert, the way that I kept my people going 40 years in the wilderness, I will do the same for you as well. I don't know about you, but this gives me great news here in 2023 to believe that if he kept Moses and he kept Joshua, then he's keeping Kyle. Then he's keeping Danielle. Then he's keeping Savannah. Then he's keeping Kyrie. Enough about me. Talk about you for a moment. Sometimes you got to make scripture personal and go, he is keeping my spouse. They acting crazy right now, but he's going to keep them anyways. He, he's keeping my kids. They not in their right mind at this moment. Come on, somebody. But he's keeping them too. He's keeping my boss. He's keeping my job. He's keeping my community. He is keeping me because he has a proven track record of doing so. High five somebody around you and tell them he's keeping us. He's, he's keeping us. He's, he's keeping us. He's, he's keeping us. Then, then the last thing that he says, he also gives him a promise of his presence by way of making this statement. I will never leave you. Can we be honest? Half the struggle we have trusting God it's because we've been hurt by people we trusted. And for some strange reason, we put God in the same category with people. Who is tight in here? Come on, lean in. But it's here that God makes a great delineation that I am not them. Yeah, you, you fill in the blank of who them is. God says, I, I ain't them. I'm not swayed emotionally. I will never leave you. I never changed my mind. I will never leave you. 
There's nothing you could have done to separate yourself from me. I will never leave you. My love will come find you. I will never leave you. Sometimes we have a hard time grasping this because we have not, here we go, grab the hold firmly, Hebrews 2, grab firmly to the word that you've heard so you're not led astray, message version. Sometimes we're drawn astray because we forgot to keep a firm grip on the promise. Here we go. Or other times we just ain't quite sure what promise to grab a hold of. That's bad English, but it's good preaching. Some of my teammates have gotten together and put together a page on our website, chapel.cc slash promises. And you can go through and look at the promises that are found in the word of God, to which scripture declares they are yes and amen. And you can put your spiritual hands around them. And sometimes things in life ain't going to change right away. But it's because God is doing something in you while you wait for him to do something around you. But you've got to have a promise that you possess in the meantime. The proof positive of this is that Joshua, hearing these three promises that God has made of protection, provision, and presence now steps out in faith and God repeats a handful of times throughout one chapter this same thing that shows up in Joshua 1 and 9. He says, this is my suggestion. <laughs> no, 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 read it with me. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Here we go. What God knows is that Joshua is going to have to face more adversity and enemies than anyone has ever faced in leading the Israelites before. Although Moses led them through the wilderness, Joshua has been watching Moses' leadership for the entirety of his life because Joshua is one of only two adults that knew captivity and was also allowed to walk walk into the promised land. Why was this? Because when Moses commissioned 12 to go and spy out the promised land, 10 spies came back and said, all we see are giants. But Joshua and Caleb looked back and said, y'all saw giants, but we saw giant grapes. Because they chose to look at an obstacle as an opportunity. And God said, you about to have a whole lot more obstacles that come your direction. You are about to go in and possess the place that I have promised for generations. And when you go in to possess, the enemies are not just going to see that you showed up and tuck tail and run. They are going to be aggressive. They are going to be intimidating. They are going to be the kind that you would never want to see in your worst nightmare. But then God looks Joshua back in his proverbial eyes and says be strong and courageous be strong and courageous somebody's been looking for a promise and whoop there it is. Be strong and courageous. How am I going to do this in the face of recovering after divorce? Do not be afraid or discouraged. Why? Because the Lord your God is with you. Single mother, I need you to understand that God will be able to be a father to the fatherless. You've just got to be strong and courageous and the Lord will be with you every everywhere that you go walking into offices that we don't want to work at anymore and the office that we ask God to put us in is now the office we're trying to get him to take us out of but can I nudge you tonight by faith and just say be strong and courageous because the Lord God is with you wherever you go somebody walked into care night this week and you're like I have no idea why I'm here this is weird Weird. I don't know nobody and all of them are jacked up but can I encourage you so are you 
you. And that's why it's time to be strong and courageous because the Lord is with you. Walking through lonely seasons when friends walked out on you, but he said he would be a mender to the brokenhearted. So be strong and courageous because the Lord is with you. Unpacking layers of grief that have heaped themselves upon you. And it feels like you'll never get out. And it feels like you'll never get over. But don't forget the promise God made to Joshua is the same promise he's made to you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. Staring down the barrel of negative self-talk and low self-esteem, it is time to see yourself as a king's kid, as the apple of his eye and the apex of his joy, as his greatest creation. When he said it was very good, he's talking about you. So be strong and courageous. No matter the family you came from, be strong and courageous. Would you high five five people around you and tell them be strong and courageous. Be strong, Devin, and courageous. Be, tell your family, be strong and courageous. Tell your spouse, be strong and courageous. Declare over your children, be strong and courageous. We will not be moved by the culture of the day. We will not be moved by the lies of the adversary. We will not be shaken by what we see in front of us. Because if God be for us, nothing and no one can stand against us. Be strong and courageous. That's it. That's it. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise that shakes hell. Give him a praise that loose bondages. Give him a praise that shakes chains off of you. Give him a praise that turns generational curses into generational promises. Let everything that has breath give God a praise in here. Here's why, here's why, I'm going, here's why, because I want to give you a chance to respond and worship. Mason, here's why, here's why, here's why we take him at his word. Because Joshua 21, not one, not one, not one, of all the Lord's what? Good promises failed. Every one was fulfilled. And if you're like me, sometimes you say, well, that was good for Joshua, good for Moses, God bless him. Where is he now? Where, where is he while I'm crying my eyes out? Where is he while nervousness has got a hold of my nervous system? Where is he while anxiety and fear seemingly have us held captive? Where is he? Can I just stop right here and say he's in Joshua 21 waiting for someone to take both hands and say, if I die holding on to this promise, then so be it. If it don't happen in my lifetime, I'll still believe it. 
But the God that didn't let any one of those promises fail for Israel is the God that won't let any one of those promises fall for my family either. But what it requires is someone with a tenacious faith that says, I'll never let go of the promises you gave. I can trust you because you're in control. I can trust you because I am in your grip and in your grasp. And the proof that I trust you is that through tears, my hands are raised. With a broken heart, my hands are raised. Going through depression, my hands are raised. And I lift up my voice with a praise that's undignified. And I lift up my voice with worship that seems unwarranted based upon my circumstances, but I choose praise. So God, tonight in this room, all the earth that's in this room, everyone we're connected to, we cry that you are great. You are not great by opinion, you are great by experience. And what you did for Joshua, and what you did for Moses, we need you to show up to our address right now. Come on, would you just lift up your voice for a moment and with the words of your own mouth, would you tell them how you need them? Tell them where you need them. Tell them the relationship you need them in. Tell them the thought process that you need them to invade. Come on, don't look at me anymore. Take a moment right here in his presence. Cause great are you, Lord. Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's sing this song as a declaration. Thank you for joining us for service today. We love that we get to serve you and your family. If you'd like to continue your worship experience through giving, we have three simple, quick, and secure ways for you to do so. First, you can use text to give Simply compose a text message with the keyword, the chapel, followed by your gift amount to 77977. Hit send and follow the prompts. Or visit our website, thechapel.cc slash give and complete your giving online. Finally, you can always mail in your giving to the chapel at 8833 Mitchell Boulevard, Trinity, Florida, 34655. Thank you for your continued generosity. We could not and would not want to do this without you.